entirely on donations. If you would like to donate to the Wichita Shakespeare Company after the show, we do have a nice table set up right over there. Our story tonight is one of love and war, of friendship and betrayal, of life and death. But before we can tell this tale tonight, we must first know the story so far. The year is 41 BC. Julius Caesar is dead. The known world is now split in three, divided chiefly amongst his successors. Lepidus, one of Caesar's most trusted captains, Octavius, his son and heir, and most importantly, Mark Antony, the avenger of his death. Our story begins with the death of Fulvia, wife to Mark Antony. Fulvia raged wars with Caesar in order to bring her husband home, for Antony has chosen instead to spend his time in the east in a wild and torrid love affair with Cleopatra, queen of the Nile. Fulvia's death as well as the attacks of the pirate Pompey would be the only thing that could bring Antony back to Rome away from his love in Egypt. As for what happens next, you'll just have to enjoy our production of William Shakespeare's Antony, Antony and, and Cleopatra! Cleopatra. time with conference harsh. Not a minute of our lives should stretch without some pleasure. Now, what's for tonight? Here, the ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> Fire wrangling queen, no messenger but mine, no known. Tonight, we'll wander through the streets and note the qualities of people. Come, my queen, last night you did desire it. Oh, 
then belike my children shall have no names. Oh, hey, tell me, how many boys and wenches must I have? If every of your wishes had a womb and fertile every wish, a million. Ouch! <laughs> Fool! I forgive thee for a witch. You think none, but your sheets are privy to your wishes. <laughs> Nay, come now, tell Iris hers. We will all know our fortunes. Your fortunes are all alike. What <laughs> <laughs> now? Now, give me particulars. I have said. Am I not an inch of fortune greater than she? Well, if you were an inch of fortune greater than I, where would you choose them? Not in my husband's nose. Our <laughs> <laughs> worst of thoughts, heavens mend. Oh, nay, come, Alexis. Her fortune, her fortune. <gasps> Give her to a man who cannot go. Jesus, I beseech thee. And let him die, too. <laughs> and then give her a worse. And let worse follow worse. Until worst of all, they send her laughing unto her grave, fifty fold a cuckold. Amen. Dear goddess, hear that prayer of the people. And therefore, dear Isis, keep the quorum and court in her accordingly. Amen. <laughs> Hush. Here's the queen. Saw you, my lord. No matter. He was disposed to mirth, but on the sudden a Roman thought had struck him. Anabarbus! Madam? Seek him out. Bring him hither. Where's Alexis? Here at your presence. My lord approaches. He will not look upon us. Go with us. Fulvia, thy wife, first came into the field. Against my brother Lucius. Aye, but soon the war had ended, and the time state made friends of them, joining their forces against Caesar, whose better issue the war upon the first encounter drave them. Well, what worst? Fulvia, thy wife is dead. Where died she? In Sycheon. Her length of sickness, what, the, what else more serious important thee to know, this bears. Forbear me. There's a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. But our contempt doth often hurl from us. We wish it ours again. The present pleasure, by revolution lowering, does become the opposite of itself. She's good being gone. I must from this enchanting queen break off ten thousand harms, more than the eels I know my idleness to attach. How now, Nino Barbus? What's your pleasure, sir? I must with haste from hence. <laughs> Cleopatra, catching but the first noise of this, dies instantly. I have seen her die twenty times upon far poorer moment. I do think there is some metal in death which commits some loving act upon her. She hath such a celerity in dying. She is cunning past man's thought. Alexa, no. Her passions are nothing but the finest part of pure love. We cannot call her winds and waters, sighs and tears. They are greater storms and tempests than almanacs can report. Would I had never seen her. Oh, sir, then you had left unseen a wonderful piece of work. Fulvia is dead. Why, sir, give to the gods a thankful sacrifice. The business she has broached in the state cannot endure my absence. And the business you have broached cannot be without you, particularly that of Cleopatra's which wholly depends on your abode. No more light answers. Let our officers have notice what we purpose. I shall break the cause of our expedience to the queen and get her leave to part. For not alone the death of Fulvia, with more urgent touches, do strongly speak to us. But the letters, too, of many our contriving friends in Rome petition us at home. 
Our pleasure, to such whose place is under us, requires our quick remove from hence. I shall do it. of time commands our service as a while, but my full heart remains in use with you. Though age could not give me freedom from folly, it does from childishness. Can Fulvia die? She's dead, my queen. or war as thou affects. Oh, I am a, a very oblivion, and I am all Antony, and I am all forgotten. But that your royalty holds idleness your subject, I should take you for idleness itself. Mistake your business. 
My brother never did urge me in this act. I did inquire it and have my learning from some true reports that drew their swords with you. Did he not rather discredit my authority with yours and make alike the wars against my stomach having alike your cause? Of this, my letters before did satisfy you. If you'll patch a quarrel as matter whole, you have not to make it with it. I ain't there not no been with to me. But you patched up your excuses! Not so! Not so! I know you could not lack, I am certain on it. The very necessity of this that I, your partner in the cause against which he fought, could not with graceful eyes attend those wars which fronted mine own peace. As for my wife, I would you had her spirit in such another. A third of the world is yours, which with a snaffle you may pace easy, but not such a wife. Yeah, would we had all such wives, that the men might go to wars with the women. So much uncurable, her garboils seize her, made out of her impatience, and not wanted shrewdness of policy too. I grant, did you give too much grieving, but for that you must but say, I could not help it. I wrote to you, to quiet me down with anger, you did not enough, my lord, and the taunt did jive my myth about of audience. Sir, he fell upon me ere admitted. Then when three kings I had newly feasted, and did want of what I was in the morning, but next day I told him of myself, which was as much as to ask him pardon. Let this fellow be nothing of our strife. If we contend out of our question, wipe him. You have broken the article of your oath to lend me arms and aid when I require them. The which you both deny! Neglect it, rather! And with poison hours that bound me up from mine own knowledge. As nearly as I may, I'll play the pit in it to you. But my honesty shall not make poor my greatness nor my power work without it. Truth is that Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt, made wars here, for which myself the ignorant motive do so far ask pardon as befits mine honor to stoop in such a case. If it might please you to enforce no further the griefs between you, to forget them quite, or to remember that the present need speaks to atone you. Or if you borrow one another's love for the instant, you may, when you hear no more words of Pompey, return it again. You shall have time to wrangle in when you have nothing else to do. Thou art a soldier only. Speak no more. Go to then, your considerate stone. I do not much dislike the matter, but the manner of his speech. For it cannot be we shall remain in friendship, our conditions so differing in their acts. Yet, if I should know what hoop should hold us staunch, from edge to edge of the world, I would pursue it. Uh, give me leave, Caesar. Speak, Agrippa. Thou hast a sister by thy mother's side, admired Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widower. Say not so, Agrippa. If Cleopatra should hear you, your reproof were well deserved of rashness. I am not married, Caesar. Let me hear Agrippa further speak. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you brothers, and to knit your heart into an enslipping knot, take Antony Octavia to his wife, whose beauty claims no worse a husband than the best of men, whose virtue and whose general graces speak that which none else can utter. By this marriage, all little jealousies which now seem great would then be nothing. Truths would be tales, where now have tales be truths. Her love to both would, each to the other, and all love to both, draw after her. Pardon what I spoke, for it is a study, not a present thought by duty ruminated. Will Caesar speak? Not till he hears how Antony is touched with what is spoke already. What power is in Agrippa, if I would say, Agrippa, be it so, to make this good? The power of Caesar, and his power unto Octavia. May I never to this good purpose that so fairly shows dream of impediment. 
Let me thy hand. Further this act of grace, and from this hour, the heart of brothers govern in our loves and sway our great designs. And there is my hand, a sister I bequeath you, whom no brother ever did love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdoms and our hearts, and never fly off of our loves again. I did not think to draw my sword against Pompey, for he hath laid strange courtesies and great of late upon me. I must thank him only, lest my remembrance suffer ill report. At heel of that, defy him. Time calls upon us. Of us must Pompey presently be sought, or else seek us out. Where lies he? About the Mount Messenum. What is his strength by land? Great and increasing, but by sea he is an absolute master. So is the fame. Would we had spoke together, haste we for it, yet ere we put ourselves in arms, dispatch we the business we have talked of. With most gladness. And do invite you to my sister's view, whither straight I'll lead you. <laughs> Welcome from Egypt, sir. Half the heart of Caesar, worthy Agrippa. Good and Obarbus. We have cause to be glad that matters were so well digested. You stayed well by it in Egypt. Aye, sir. We did sleep day out of countenance and made the night light with drinking. She's a most triumphant lady, if report be square to her. When first she met Mark Antony, she pursed up his heart upon the river of Sidness. Now Antony must leave her utterly. <laughs> Never. He will not. Age cannot wither her, nor custom stale her infinite variety. Other women coy the appetites they feed. She makes hungry that which she most satisfies. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antony, Octavia is a blessed lottery to him. Oh, but let us go. Good and Obarbus, make yourself my guest whilst you abide here. Humbly, sir, I thank you.
Good night, sir. Good night. Now, madam, you wish yourself in Egypt. Would I had never come from thence, nor you thither. If you can, your reason. I see it in my motion, have it not in my tongue. But yet, hie you to Egypt again. Say to me, whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Caesar's. Therefore, O Antony, stay not by his side. If thou dost play with him at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck, he beats thee against the odds. Thy luster thickens when he shines by. I say again, thy spirit is all afraid to govern thee near him. But he away, tis noble. Get thee gone. Art or half, she has spoken truth. The very dice obey her. And in our sports, my better cunning faints under his chance. Thus will I to Egypt, and though I make this marriage for my peace, in the East my pleasure lies. Ram thou thy fruitful tidings in my ear that long time. Find 
out the features of Octavia. Her years, her, her inclination. Wait a minute. The one, one way he's painted like a gorgon, the other way's a Mars. Did you, do Alexis find out how tall she is? No. Oh. What, are the brothers parted? They have dispatched with Pompey. He is gone. The other three are sealing. Octavia weeps to part from Rome, and Caesar is sad. <laughs> Adieu, noble Agrippa. Good fortune, worthy soldier, and farewell. No further, sir. <laughs> You take from me a great part of myself. Use me well in it. Sister, prove such a wife as my thoughts make thee, and thy farthest band shall pass on thy approve. Most noble Antony, let not this piece of virtue which is set between us as the cement of our love to keep it builded be the ramp to batter the fortress of it. For better might we have loved without this mean, if on both parts it not be cherished. Make me not offended in your distrust. I have said. You shall not find, though you be therein curious, the least cause for what you seem to fear. So, the gods keep you, and make the hearts of Romans serve your ends. We will here part. The elements be kind to thee, and make thy spirits all of comfort. Fare thee well. My noble brother, The April's in her eyes. It is love's spring, and these the showers to bring it on. Be cheerful. Sir, look well to my husband's house. What? What? what Octavia? I'll tell you in your ear. Uh, no, sweet Octavia, you shall hear from me yet. I shall not outgo my thinking of you. Come, sir, come. I'll wrestle you in my strength of love. Look, here I have you thus i let you go and give you to the gods. Adieu. Be happy. Farewell. 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 Where is the woman? Go to, go to. Oh, come hither, girl. Most gracious man!
no matter. You will bring her to me where I write. All may be well enough. I warrant you, madam. Nay, nay, Octavia, not only that, that were excusable. That and a thousands more of similable import. He hath made new wars with Pompey, made his will and read it to public ear, spoke scantly of me when he could not but pay me terms of honor, called it sickly, he vented them. Most narrow measure lent me, when best hint was given him, he not took it or did it from his teeth. My good lord, believe not all, or if you must believe, stomach not all. A more unhappy lady if this division chance never stood between. Praying for both parts, the good gods will mock me presently when I shall pray, O oh, bless my lord and husband. But I do that prayer by crying out as loud, O oh, bless my brother. Husband, when, when brother prays and destroys the prayer. No midway twixt these extremes at all. Gentle Octavia, let your best love draw to that point which seeks best to preserve it. Oh. If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Better I were not yours than yours so branchless. Yet as you requested, yourself shall go between. In the meantime, lady, I'll raise preparation of a war. Shall stain your brother. Make your soonest hints, so your desires are yours. Thanks to my lord. The jolt of power makes me weak most of Your reconciler. Wars twixt you twain would be as if the world should cleave, and that slain men should solder up the rift. When it appears to you where this begins, turn your displeasure that way. For our faults can never be so equal that your love can equally move with them. Provide your going. Choose your own I command what cost your heart has mine to. Contending Rome, he has done all this and more in Alexandria. Here's the manner of it. In the marketplace, on a tribunal silver, himself and Cleopatra, in chairs of gold, were publicly enthroned. At the feet sat Caesarion, whom they call my father's son, and all the unlawful issue that their lust since hath made between them. Unto her he gave the establishment of Egypt, of lower Syria, Cyprus, and Lydia made absolute queen. This in the public eye. In the common showplace where they practice. His sons, he there proclaimed, the kings of kings. Great Media, Parthia, and Armenia he gave to Alexander. To Ptolemy, he assigned Syria, Cilicia, and Phoenicia. She, in the habiliments of the goddess Isis that day appeared, and oft before gave audience, as tis reported so. Let Rome be thus informed. Who queasy with his insolence already will their good thoughts call from him. The people know it and have heard his accusations. Who does he accuse? Caesar. And that having in Sicily Sextus Pompeius spoiled, we had not rated him his part of the isle. Then does he say that he left me some shipping unrestored. Lastly, he frets that Lepidus of the Triumvirate should be deposed, and being that we detain all his revenue. Sir, this should be answered. <laughs> it is done already, and the messenger gone. I have told him that Lepidus was grown too cruel, that he his high authority did abuse and did deserve his change. For what I have conquered, I grant him part, but in Armenia and other of his conquered kingdoms, I demand the like. He'll never yield to that. Nor must it not be yielded to in this. Hail Caesar and my lord. Hail, most dear Caesar! That ever I should call thee castaway! You have not called me so, nor have you cause. Why have you stolen upon us thus? You come not like Caesar, sister. The wife of Antony should have an army for an usher, 
and the nays of horses to tell of your approach long ere did you appear. The trees, by the way, should have borne men, and expectation fainted longing for what it had not. Nay, the dust should have ascended to the roof of heaven raised by your populous troops. But you are come a market mate to Rome, and have prevented the ostentation of our love, which, left unshown, is often left unloved. We should have met you by sea and land, supplying every stage with augmented greetings. Good, my lord, to come thus was I not constrained, but did on my free will. My lord, Mark Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grieved ear with all, wherein I begged his pardon for return. Which soon he granted, being an obstruct twixt his lust and him. Do not say so, my lord. I have eyes on him, and his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now? My lord, in Athens. No, most <coughs> wronged sister, Cleopatra hath nodded him to her. He hath given his empire up to a whore, who now are levying the kings of earth for war. I mean most wretched, that have my heart parted betwixt two friends that do afflict each other. Welcome hither. Your, your letters before did withhold our breaking forth. So we perceive both how you were wrong led, and we in negligent danger. Cheer your heart. Be you not troubled with the time which drives over your necessities with these strong drives, but let determined things to destiny hold unbewailed their way. Welcome to Rome. Nothing more dear to me. You are abused beyond the mark of thought, and the high gods to do you justice make them ministers of us and those that love you. Ever welcome to us, my dear sister. Welcome, lady. Welcome, dear madam. Every heart in Rome does love and pity you. Only the adulterous Antony, most large in his abominations, turns you off and gives his potent regiment to a troll that noises it against us. Is it so, sir? Most certain. Sister, welcome. Be you ever known to patience, my dear sister? Why should not we be there in person? Well, I could make reply. If we should serve with horse and mares together, uh, the horse were merely lost. Uh, the mares would bear a soldier and his horse. What is it thou sayest? Your presence needs must puzzle Antony. Take from his heart, take from his brain, from his time, which should not then be spared. He is already traduced for levity, and tis said in Rome that Faultness and Eunuch and your maids manage this war. Sink, Rome, and their tongues rot that speak against us. A charge we bear in the war, and as president of my kingdom, I will appear therefore a man. Speak not against it. I'll not be left behind. Nay, I have here comes the emperor. And that is, we will fight with him by sea. By sea, what else? Why will my lord do so? For that he dares as to it. <laughs> Your ships are not well manned. Your mariners are muleters, reapers, people engrossed with swift impress. In Caesar's fleet are those that often have against Pompey fought. Their ships are, yeah, yours heavy. No disgrace shall fall you, refusing him at sea, being prepared for land. By sea! By sea! Most worthy sir, you therein throw away the absolute soldiership you have by land. I will fight at sea. I have sixty sails. Our overplus of shipping will be burned. And then the rest full manned from the head of Actium beat the approaching Caesar. But if we fail, we then can do it at land. Taurus, my lord, strike not by 
my land. Keep whole, provoke not battle till we have done at sea. Do not exceed the prescript of our scroll, for our fortune lies upon this jump. Said we are squadrons on yon side of the hill, and I of Caesar's battle, from which place we may the number of ships behold, and so proceed accordingly. Not, not all, not. I can behold no longer the Antoniad, the Egyptian admiral, with all their sixty, fry and turn the rudder. To see it, mine eyes are blasted. Gods and goddesses, all the whole synod of them. What's thy passion? The greater panto of the world of lost. With very ignorance, we've kissed away kingdoms and provinces. How appears the fight? On our side, like the token pestilence, where death is sure, young Rubaj and Nag of Egypt, the leprosy overtake. Both is the same, or rather are the elder, with mansions like a pair of twins appeared. The breeze upon her like a cow in June, hoist sails and flies. Ah, that I beheld. Mine eyes did sicken at the sight and could not endure a further view. She once being loot, the noble ruin of her magic. Antony claps on his sea wing and, like a doting mallard, leaves the fight and height flies after her. Never before did, did see an action of such shame. Experience, honor, manhood, never before did violate so itself. Alack, alack. Our fortune on the sea is out of breath and sinks most lamentably. Had our general bent when he knew himself, it had gone well. Oh, he has given an example for a flight justly by his own. I and are you thereabouts? Why then, good night indeed. Toward Peloponnesus it fled. Tis easy to it. There I will attend what further comes. To Caesar will I render my legions and my horse. Six kings already show me the way of yielding. I'll yet follow the wounded chance of Antony, though my reason sits in the wind against me. young man, dodge and palter in the shifts of loneliness. Who with half the bulk of the world, plain as I please, making and marring fortunes? You do know how much you were my conqueror. Affection. 
should never have nicked his captainship. At such a point, when half to half the world opposed, he being the mere question, twas a shame no less than was his loss. It's of course, your flying flags to leave his navy game. Let me peace! Is that his answer? Aye, my lord. Then the queen shall have courtesy, so she will yield us up. He says so. Let her knowest, to the boy Caesar, send this grizzled head. That head, my lord. To him again. Tell him he wears the rose of youth upon him. From which the world should know something particular. His coins, ships, legions, may all be a coward's whose ministers would prevail under the services of a child as soon as at the command of Caesar! A message from Caesar! What, no more ceremony? <laughs> Caesar's will. Here to part. None but friends. Say boldly. So happily are they friends to Antony. He needs as many, sir, as Caesar has. Or he needs not us. <laughs> if Caesar please, our master will leap to be his friend. For us, you know. And that is Caesar's. So thus then, thou most renown. Caesar entreats not to consider in which case thou stands further than he is Caesar. Go on, right royal. He knows you embrace Antony not as you did love, but as you feared him. No. Scars upon your honor, he does pity as constraint and blemishes, not as deserved. Well, he is a god and knows what is most right. My honor was not yielded, but conquered merely. Hmm. To be sure of that, I'll ask Antony. Oh, sir, sir, thou art so leaky that we must leave thee to thy sinking, for thy dearest quit thee. So shall I say to Caesar what you require of him? For Pardon begs to be desired to give. It much would please him that of his fortunes you should make a staff to lean upon, but it would warm his spirits to hear from me. You had left Antony and put yourself under his shroud, the universal landlord. What is your name? My name is Theron. You tell great Caesar that in deputation I kiss his conquering hand, that I am prompt to lay down my crown at his feet and kneel there. Favors by Jove that thunders, what art thou fellow? One that but performs the bidding of the fullest man, worthiest to have commanded obey. You will be whipped. Approach there. Aye, you kite. Now, gods and devils, Authority does melt from me of late when I cried ho. Like boys unto a muss, kings would start forth and cry, Your will! Have you no ears? I am Antony yet. Get thee back to Caesar. Look, thou sayest he makes me angry with him, for he seems proud and disdainful. Harping on what I am, not what he knew I was. He makes me angry. And at this time, most easy tis to do it. When my good stars, who were my former guides, have empty left their orbs and shot their fires into the abyss of hell. If he mislike my speech in what is done, tell him he has hypocrisy. 
my infranch bondsman, whom he may at pleasure whip or hang or torture as he shall like. The quit me. Urgent thou. This with a strike big on. Have thou done yet? We flatter Caesar. Would you mingle eyes with the one that ties his points? If it be so, from my cold heart let engendered hail. Poison it at the source. Dissolve my life. The last Caesarean smite. I am satisfied. Caesar sits down in Alexandria where I will oppose his fate. Our force by land is nobly held. Our severed navy too have knit again. The fleet threatening most sea life. Where hast thou been, my heart? Was thou not here, lady? If I shall once more return from the field to kiss these lips, I will appear in blood. I and my sword will earn our chronicle. There's hope in it yet. <laughs> There's my brave lord. <laughs> Let's have one other gaudy night. Call to me all my sad captains. Fill our bowls once more. Let's mock the midnight bell. Today is my birthday. I had thought to hold it poor, but since my lord is Antony again, I will be Cleopatra. Well, we shall yet do well. <laughs> No, he'll outstare the lightning. To be furious is to be frightened out of fear, and in such a mood the dove will peck the estrich. I see still a diminution in our captain's brain restores his heart. And while it preys upon reason, it eats the sword it fights with. I will seek some way to leave him. He called me boy, and chides as he had power to beat me out of Egypt. My messenger, he has abused, dares me to personal combat, Caesar to Antony! Let the old ruffian know I have many other ways to die. Meanwhile, laugh at his challenge. Caesar must think, when one so great begins to rage, he's hunted, even to falling. Give him no breath, but now make food of his distraction. Never anger, make good guard for itself. Let our best heads know that tomorrow's the last of many battles we mean to fight. Within our files, there are, of those that served Mark Antony but late, enough to fetch him in. Go, see it done, and feast the army. We have store to do it, and they have earned the waste. <laughs> Poor Antony. <laughs> Eros! Mine armor! Eros! Sleep a little! No, my chap! Come, Eros! Mine armor! Come, good lad, put mine armor on. If fortune be not ours today, it is because we brave her. And they all help too. What's this for? Let be, let be. Thou art the armor of my heart. False. False. This. This. So love. I'll help too. Thus it must be. Well, well, we shall thrive now. Seest thou, good fellow, good. Go put on my defenses. Briefly, sir. This morning, like the spirit of a youth that means to be of note, begins bedtimes. Fare thee well, dame. 
Whatever becomes of me, this is a soldier's kiss. Rebukable. I leave thee now like a man of steel. Adieu. Please you retire to your chamber. Oh, leave me. He goes forth gallantly that he and Caesar might determine this war in a single fight. And but now well on. The gods make this a happy day to answer me. I would thou and those thy stars had once prevailed to make me fight at land. Hast thou done so? The kings that are revolted and the soldier that this morning has left thee would have still followed thy heels. Who's gone this morning? Who? Whatever near to thee. Call for Anabarbus, he shall not hear thee. Or from Caesar's camp say, I am none of thine. What sayest thou? Sir, he's with Caesar. Though his chests and treasures he has not with him. Go, Eros. Send his treasure after. Do it. Detain not a jot, I charge thee. Write to him. I will subscribe gentle adieus and greetings. Say that I wish he never find more cause to change a master. Oh, my fortunes have corrupted honest men. Dispatch. In a barbers! Go forth, Agrippa, and begin the fight. Our will is Anthony be took alive. Make it so known. Caesar, I shall. Time of universal peace is near. Prove this a prosperous day. The three looked world shall bear the olive freely. Antony is coming to the field. Go, charge our soldiers. Plant those that have revolted in the van that Antony may seek to spread his fury upon himself. <laughs> and Obarbus, Antony hath after thee sent thy treasure with his bounty over plus. The messenger came on my guard and is even now at thy tent unloading of his mules. I ain't given you. Mock not, Anobarbus, I tell you true. Best you safe the bringer out of the host. I, I must attend mine office or I'd have done it myself. Oh, your messenger, your emperor continues still a Jove. I am alone, the villain of the earth, and feel I am so most. Oh, Antony, thou mine of bounty. How wouldst thou have paid my better service and my turpitude thou dost so crown with gold? This blows my heart. If swift thought break it not, a swifter mean shall outstrike thee. Tomorrow do it, I fear. I fight against thee! I will go seek some ditch wherein to die. The false best fits my latter part of life. Retire! We have engaged ourselves too far. Caesar himself has work, and our oppression exceeds what we expected. shall see us. We'll spill the blood that today has escaped. Give me thy hand. To this great fairy I'll commend thy acts. Make her thanks bless thee. Oh, thou my heart, chain mine on neck 
leap thou attire and all through proof of harness to my heart. And there, ride the pants triumphing. Oh, Lord of Lords, comest thou smiling from the world's greatest snare uncaught. My nightingale, we have beat them to their beds. What, girl? Though our gray do something mingle with our younger brown, yet have we a brain that nourishes our nerves and can get goal for goal of youth. Behold this man. Commend unto his lips thy favoring hand. Kiss it, my warrior. He hath fought today as if a god in hate of mankind had destroyed in such a shape. I'll give thee, friend, an armor, all of gold. It was a king's. He is deserving of it. <laughs> Were it carbuckled like holy Phoebus's car. Give me thy hand. True, Alexandria will make a jolly march. Bear our hack targets like the men that owe them. At our great palace the capacity to cap this host, we would all sup together and drink carouses to the next day's fate, which promises royal peril! Oh, Sovereign of Egypt, hail! Hail! <laughs> Lord of Lords. Be you witness to me, O oh, thou blessed moon, when men revolted shall upon record bear hateful memory, poor and obarbous, did before thy face repent. O sovereign mistress of true melancholy, the poisonous damp of night disponge upon me that life, a very rebel to my will, may hang no longer on me. Throw my heart against the flint and the hardness of my fault, which, being dried with grief, will turn to powder and finish all foul thoughts. Oh, Antony, nobler than my revolt is infamous. Forgive me in thine own particular, but let the world rank in register myself as a master lever and a fugitive. Oh, Antony. Oh, Antony. Their preparation is today by sea. We please them not by land. For both, my lord. I would they'll fight in the fire or in the air. We'll fight there, too. But this it is. Our foot upon the hills adjoining to the city shall stay with us. Order for sea is given. They have put forth the haven where their appointment we may best discover and look on their endeavors. But being charged, we will be still by land. Which, as I take it, we shall. For their best force is forth to man their galleys. Two veils and hold our best advantage! Yeah. All is lost! The foul Egyptian hath betrayed me. <laughs> My fleet hath yielded to the foe, and yonder they cast their caps up like friends long lost. I shall see no more. Fortune and Antony part here. Betrayed I am. Oh, this false soul of Egypt. This grave charm whose eyes beckoned forth my wars and called them home. Whose bosom was my crowned, my chief end. Like a ripe gypsy hat that fast and loose Gown me to the very heart of loss! Ah, the spell. The vault. Vanish! Why is my lord enraged against his love? Vanish! Or I will give thee thy 
Caesar's Irvings and blemish Caesar's triumph. Let him have thee and hoist thee up to the shouting plebeians. Go! It's well you are gone. If it be well to live, but better twere thou fellest in two, my theory, for one death might have prevented many. Help me, O oh my women. He is more mad than a telemon for his shield. To the monument. There, lock yourself and send him word you are dead. The soul and body ride not more in parting than in greatness going on. To the monument. Go to Antony. Tell him I have slain myself. Say the last I spoke was Antony. Word it, I prithee, piteously. Hence, Mardian, to the monument. I made these wars for Egypt and the queen whose heart I thought I had. She had mine. She, Eros, has packed cards with Caesar, and false played my glory unto an enemy's triumph. Nay, weep not, gentle Eros. There is left us ourselves to end ourselves. Oh, thy vile lady, she has robbed me of my sword. No, Antony. My mistress loved thee, and her fortunes mingled with thine entirely. Hence, saucy woman, peace. She has betrayed me and shall die the death. The death of one person can be paid but once and that she has discharged. What thou wouldst do is done unto thy hand. The last she spake was Antony, most noble Antony. Then in the midst of tearing groan did break the name of Antony. It was divided between her heart and lips. She rendered life by name so buried in her. Dead then. Dead. An arm, Eros, the long day's task is done, and we must sleep. But thou departest hence safe, does repay thy labor richly. Go! Pace, Eros, pace. No longer a soldier. Bruised pieces. Go. You have been nobly born. I will overtake thee, Cleopatra, and weep for my pardon. Eros! I come, my queen. Eros! Stay for me. The souls do couch on flowers. We'll hand in hand and from our sprightly port make the ghost gaze and all the haunt be ours. Come, Eros. Eros! What would my lord? Since Cleopatra died, I have lived in such dishonor that the gods detest my face. Thou sworest, Eros, that when I should see behind me the inevitable cause of disgrace and honor, that on my command thou then would kill me. Do it. The time has come. It's not me thou strikest. It is Caesar thou defeatest. Oh, sir, pardon me. When I did make thee free, swarest thou not then to do this when I bade thee? Do it at once. 
For thy president's services are all but accidents and purposed. Draw and come. Turn from me, then. That noble countenance wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lo thee. My sword is drawn. Then let it do at once the reason why thou hast drawn it. My dear master, my captain and my emperor, let me say, before I strike this bloody stroke, farewell. Tis said, man, and farewell. Farewell, great chief. Shall I strike now? Now, Eros. Oh, why there then? Thus do I escape the sorrow of Antony's death! Thrice nobler than myself, Thou teachest me, O valiant arrows, what I should, and thou couldst not. My queen and arrows have, by their brave instruction, got upon me a nobleness of record. But I will be a bridegroom in my death, and run into it as to a lover's bed. Come then. Eros, thy master dies thy scholar to do this! How? Not dead! Not dead! Oh, God! Oh! Oh, dispatch me! Most absolute Lord, my mistress Cleopatra sent me to thee. When did she send thee? Now, my Lord. Where is she? Locked in her monument, she had a fear of what hath come to pass. But when she saw which never shall be found, you did suspect she had disposed of Caesar, and that your rage would not be purged. She sent you word of her death, and fearing how that might work, she sent me to proclaim the truth, and I am come, I dread, too late. Too late, Diomed. Bear me, good friend, where Cleopatra bides. Tis the last service I shall command you. Dying Egypt, dying. Only I hear importune death the while, until of many thousand kisses the poor one I lay on thy lips. Oh, quicker, I am gone. Welcome, welcome. Die where thou hast lived, quicken with kissing. Oh, had my lips power, I'd wear them out. None about Caesar trust but Proculius. 
My resolution and my hands I'll trust, none about Caesar. Miserable change now, at my end lament no sorrow at. But please your thoughts, and feeding them with those of my former fortunes wherein I lived. The greatest prince of the world, the noblest, who now not basely die. Go to him, Dolabella. Bid him yield. Being so frustrated, tell him he mocks the pauses that he makes. Caesar, I shall. <laughs> Wherefore is that? And what art thou that darest appear thus to us? I'm called Diomedes. Mark Antony I served, who best was worthy, best to be served, while he stood up and spoke. He was my master, and I was wore my life to spend upon his haters. And if that pleases to take me as I was to him, I'll be to Caesar. If that place is not, I'll yield thee up my life. I... What, what is it thou sayest? I say, oh, Caesar, Antony is dead. The breaking of so great a thing should have made a greater crack. The round world should have shook lions into civil streets and citizens to their dens. The death of Antony is not a single doom. The name lay a moiety of the world. Caesar Antony is dead, not by minister of justice, nor by hired hand, but with that self hand, which hath the courage did lend it, split at the heart. Here is his sword. I robbed his wound of it. Behold, it is stained with his most noble blood. Look you sad, friends. The gods rebuke me. But it is not the tidings that wash the eyes of kings. Strange it is that nature makes us Tells us to lament our most lamented deeds. His taints and honors weigh people in him. The rare spirit never did steer humanity. But you gods may give us some fault to make us men. Caesar is touched. Oh, Antony, I have followed thee to this. But we do lance diseases in our bodies. I must perforce have shown thee to such a declining day, or look on thine. We could not stall together in the whole world. But let me lament the tears as sovereign as the blood of hearts that thou, my brother, my competitor and top of all design, my mate in empire, friend and companion in the front of war, the arm of mine own body! And the heart where mine his thoughts did kindle. That our stars should divide our equalness to this. Hear me, good friends, but I shall tell you in some meter season. The business of this girl looks out of her, but we'll hear her what she says. Whence are you? <coughs> A poor Egyptian yet, my mistress, the queen, to invite in all she has, her monument, to thy intense desires that she may frame herself to the way she is forced to. Bid her have good heart. 
She shall know of us by some of ours how kindly and how honorably we determine for her. For Caesar cannot live to be ungentle. The gods preserve thee. Come hither, Peculius. Go and say we purpose her no shame. Give her what comforts the quality of her passion shall require, lest in her greatness by some mortal stroke she do defeat us. For her life in Rome would be eternal in our triumph. Go, and with your speediest, bring us what she says and how you find her. Caesar, I shall. Take her to my guard. So, Doabella, it do content me best. Be gentle to her. To Caesar I will speak what you will, if you will employ me to him. Say I will die! Hear me, good madam. Your loss is as yourself great, and you bear it as answering to the weight. Would I might never o'ertake pursued success, but I do feel, by the rebound of yours, a grief that smites my very heart at root. Thank you, Dolabella. Know you what Caesar means to do with me? I am loath to tell you what I would you Nay, knew. pray you, sir. Though he be honorable, will lead me then in triumph. Madam, he will. Caesar through Syria intends his journey, and in three days' time, you 
with your children will he send before? Make your best use of this. I have performed your pleasure and my promise. Olabella, I remain your debtor. And I your servant. To you, good queen. Fare thee well. And thanks. What thinkest thou, Iris? Thou an Egyptian puppet, as well as I, to be hoisted up, as well as mechanic slaves with their greasy aprons and forced to drink their vapor. I'll never see it, for I'm sure my nails are stronger than mine eyes. Oh, my women, show me like a queen. Fetch my, my best attires. Bring me my crown and all. Wherefore's this noise? There is a royal woman who will not be denied your highness' presence. And she met her. What a poor instrument to do a noble deed. She brings me liberty. This is the woman. Avoid and leave her. Hast thou brought the pretty worm of Nihilus? That kills and pains not? Truly I have him. But I would not be the party that should desire you to touch him. For his might is immortal. Those that do die of it do seldom or never recover. Remember'st thou any that have died on it? Very many. Men and women too. I heard of one of them no longer than yesterday. A very honest woman, though given something to lie, as a woman should not do. But, but in the way of honesty, how she died in the biting of it, what pain she felt, truly she makes a very good report of the worm. But he that will believe all that they say shall never be saved by half that they do. But this is most fallible. The worm's an odd worm. Get thee hence, farewell. I wish you all joy of the worm. Bring me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Methinks I hear Antony call. He rouses himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar. Oh, husband, I come. To my courage doth prove my title. I am fire and air and all other elements I give to baser life. So have you done. Well then, comes thou and kiss the last bit of warmth from my lips. Oh, kind of harm you. Farewell. Good Iris. Long farewell. as a lover's pinch, which hurts, but is desired. Dost thou lie still? 
Thou provest to the world it is not worth leave taking. <laughs> Dissolve thick cloud and rain. They may say the gods themselves do weep. <laughs> Come, thou mortal wretch. Poor venomous fool. Be angry and dispatch. <gasps> oh, Easter star! <laughs> Peace. Peace. Dost thou not see? The baby has sucked the nurse to sleep. Oh, break! Possession lies, alas, unparalleled. <laughs> the only window closed, and golden Phoebus never again beheld eyes so royal. Crown is arrived. And we'll play. Where is the queen? Speak softly, wake her not. Caesar hath sent for her. Too slow a messenger. Oh, come apace thee, dispatch. She hardly feel thee. Approach, ho! All's not well. Caesar is beguiled. It's well done. And fitting for a princess descended of so many royal kings. How goes it here? All dead. Caesar, thy thoughts touch their effects in this. Thyself art coming to see the dreaded act which thou thou sought to hinder. Oh, sir, you are too sure an augurer. That which you did fear is done. Bravest at the last. She leveled at our purpose and, being royal, took her own way. The manor of their deaths, I do not see them bleed. Who was last with them? A simple gentlewoman who brought her figs. This was her basket. Poisoned then? Oh, Carmian, oh, Caesar, th this Carmian lived but now. She stood and spake. I found her trimming up the diadem of her dead mistress. Tremblingly she stood and on the sudden dropped. Oh, noble weakness. If she had swallowed poison, it would appear by external swelling. But she looks like sleep, as she would catch another Anthony in her strong toil of grace. Here on her breast, there's a vent of blood, something blown. This is an aspic's trail. And these fig leaves have slime upon them, such as the aspic leaves upon the caves of Nile. Most improbable that so she died. Take up her bed and bear her woman from the monument. Shall be buried by her Antony. And no grave on this earth shall clip in it a pair so famous. High events such as these strike those that make them. And their story is no less in pity than his glory which brought them to be lamented. Our army shall, in solemn show, attend this funeral. And then to Rome. <laughs> 